All right, so today we're going to do um, four, five, and four, well, just four, five, um, which is sine and cosine today, okay? Um, so just keep in mind that they are repetitive waves. You learned about them last year, right? And they're repetitive waves because you just continually can go around the circle over and over, and sine and cosine stem from the unit circle. So do all the other six, or all the other four. Um, one thing we talked about before, which we're going to revisit now, is that the domain... Um, of sine and cosine is negative infinity to infinity and that the range is from negative 1 uh, to 1. Okay, Think about the unit circle, that makes sense. You can continue around the circle either clockwise or counterclockwise and then the highest point would be 1 and then the lowest point would be negative 1. So this is where all this is coming from. Uh, the period of sine and cosine is 2 pi and that is another um, thing that we want to talk about. Okay, so we're going to look at all of these things today. Um, you can do this on the calculator, uh, but we're not going to because you don't get to use your calculator. Okay, the key here though is if um, you're going to graph it just to check for now, you have to be in radian mode and then you want to change your scale. Okay, so that it counts um, by pi over 2. Okay, so when you go into the window and you change the scale, you'll, you'll notice that it's now in terms of pi. Um, all right, so we're just going to graph the parent function first. So the parent function for sine, first of all, we just literally talked about this. The domain is from negative infinity um, to infinity. And the range is from negative 1 to 1, both with brackets because it's going to be able to touch at 1 and negative 1. And then the period is 2 pi. Now, we're going to refer to this both as the jump or the scale, okay? So when you talk about what is the jump of the graph or what's the scale of the graph, in order to figure it out, all you have to do is take the period, um, which in this case the um, parent function is 2 pi, and you have to divide it by 4. So we're going to take 2 pi, divide it by 4, and that's going to give us um, pi over 2. So on our scale, on our um, x-axis here, our theta axis, we're now going to count by pi over 2. Sound good? Okay, so we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. We're definitely going to be wanting to be good at adding those fractions, especially in terms of pi. And then we're going to go from 1 uh, to negative 1. Okay, so now I want you to think we've got to refresh our memories with the unit circle. Okay, so hopefully you don't have to look at it, but if you do, it's fine, it's out. So um, what is sine at 0? So this is like our radian measure now, okay? So our radian measure um, is like our x and then our y value um, is, well, just the y values. So what is sine at zero degrees or zero radians? Zero, good. So sine touches at the origin, okay? What is sine at pi over two? One, so it goes up to one. What is sine at pi? Zero, so it touches back down at the axis there. What is sine at 3 pi over 2? Very good. And then at 2 pi? Good. Okay, so this is the parent function for sine. Now it's curved, so I don't want to see any sharp points. You've got to make sure you draw in those curves. Now technically we should... Um, we could have arrows on both ends because it is a repetitive wave. This is going to continue on and on forever. However, we're just going to graph that one period. Now, I'm only going to have you graph one period for everything that we do in the notes and everything that we do on a quiz or, or like the final exam. The book is going to tell you to graph two periods. You can if you want, but you don't have to. I'm only looking for one of them. Okay? So the graph um, for your homework can just be one full period as well. So we don't need arrows on the ends here. Okay? Another thing is every max and min I want to see labeled on your graph. So we have to label these points, pi over 2 and 1, and 3 pi over 2 and negative 1. And then we also want to have our function labeled. So this is going to be y equals the sine of x. Okay. Do you remember this from last year? Yeah, good. Okay, that's great. Now, um, yeah. Here, yeah. I just counted by pi over 2. So in order to figure out the scale, you just take the period and you divide it by 4. Okay, any other questions? 
Now, unfortunately, these notes kind of got screwed up. So we are going to draw this graph on the next page, but we can fill in this information here. We're kind of shifting gears now. We're going to talk about cosine. So we're going to do all the same stuff. We're going to think about the unit circle, because again, that's where these graphs are coming from. And then the domain and the range are still the same. So the domain for cosine is still negative infinity to infinity, and the range is negative 1 to 1. And the period is also 2 pi. To, bless you. to figure out the scale or the jump, all you have to do is take that period of 2 pi, divide it by 4, giving you pi over 2. Okay, now I'm going to, let's just draw this on um, this here. We'll have more room. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to label our graph. We're going to go from 1 to negative 1. And our jump is still the same. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2 takes me to pi. Another pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. And then add another one, you're at 2 pi. Okay. Now let's think about the unit circle again. So cosine at 0 is 1. So cosine starts at 0, 1. What is cosine at pi over 2? 0. Remember, it's your x value. So what's the x value at pi? What's cosine at pi? Negative 1. And then at 3 pi over 2, we're back to 0. And then finally at 2 pi, we're at 1. And again, I want any max or min labeled. So the intercepts I can see because you're going to label your scale, unless for some reason you have to do a shift and put it in the middle, you don't have to label the intercepts, okay? Um, but here we are at 0, 1, um, pi negative 1, and 2 pi 1. Okay, so I want to see all those labeled. And then again, we have a curve. So we're just going to connect these, make sure we're drawing it like it's a curve. And then we want to label that function. So y equals the cosine of x. So far so good? Okay, everyone's good with this. So if you can't memorize this, you really don't need to. You know your unit circle. So if you can't remember the parent function, then just plot the points based on the unit circle. All right? Um, so we're going to kind of just look at this in terms of standard form now. So whether you have sine or cosine, um, it's going to take on this form. So here, this A represents the amplitude. Okay, which is like the height okay, um, of those waves. Let's see, B is going to affect our period. Okay, so that's going to change not only how um, stretched the horizontally or shrunk vertically, but it's also going to change what we um, count by, okay, what the jump or the scale is. Uh, the H is going to shift this left or right just like it has in every other parent function we've talked about. And then the k shifts up or down. And again, that is the same thing that we've talked about before. Okay, So that takes on the same pattern. If it's a minus in parentheses, it moves right. If it's a plus in the parentheses, it moves left. Whatever it does on the outside, it moves up or down according to the sign. Okay, um, In general, to find the amplitude, you're going to take the absolute value of A. Okay. So amplitude is always a positive number. Um, the period, like we talked about before, is um, 2 pi divided by um, B now. Okay. So 2 pi is the normal parent functions period, but if I change it with a number, then you have to divide by um, B to figure out the new period. And then the jump, you're just going to take your period and you're going to divide it by 4. Okay, now remember that the jump is the same thing as the scale. Okay, so we're going to kind of use those terms interchangeably. Everybody okay so far? Okay, this is just talking about transformations now. Something is different other than sine and cosine, which it will be. Okay. Um, 
All right, so we're going to have to do some flipping back and forth. If you have a different color pen now, I would switch to that color. So looking at A, um, let's see what we have going on. So our equation is y equals 2 times the sine of x minus pi over 2. So I notice a few things. First of all, there's this 2 out front. So that means that the amplitude is going to be affected, which is going to change the range, because that's going to change how high and how low the curves go. So that's going to be affected. The other thing I notice is this minus pi over 2. What is that telling me to do there? It's going to shift it, right? And how much is it going to shift it? Yeah, we're going to shift right pi over 2. And then we're also going to change that amplitude. So now the amplitude... Um, is just the absolute value of 2, okay, so it's 2, and that means it's going to affect the, um, let's see, well, it doesn't really affect the period or the jump, right, because there's no value for B, so X is, um, still has a coefficient of 1, so that means our period, I could still write that there, is still going to be 2 pi, right, which means the jump or the scale is still going to be pi over 2. The only difference here is we're just going to move this graph pi over 2 to the right. Okay, and we're just going to go up higher and down lower. Everybody okay with that information? Can I turn the page back to where we started? Okay, so we're going to go back and now we're going to graph um, our equation. So we have to go up to 2 and down to negative 2 now. Our scale is still the same, the jump is still the same, um, but we have to move it to the right pi over 2, which means I really need to extend this graph um, pi over 2. So if you think about 2 pi, it's like 4 pi over 2, right? So if I had another pi over 2, I'm at 5 pi over 2. Okay. Now, it's all right, we're still on vacation. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to move this all to the right pi over 2. It's very simple, right? So normally we would start at 0, 0, but when we shift this point, now it's going to be at um, pi over 2, 0. Then notice that sine goes up to a maximum. I'm still going to go up to a maximum, but now my maximum is not going to be at 1. Where is it going to be at? 2, because the amplitude changed. And then I come down to intersect. So now that's just shifted over to the right pi over 2. And then I go down to a minimum, but I have to go down all the way to negative 2. And then back up uh, to an intercept at 5 pi over 2. And then go ahead and label those points. So pi um, and 2, and then 2 pi and negative 2. And when we draw in that curve, we should see it just stretched kind of vertically and then um, shifted to the right, which is exactly what that looks like. Okay? Then go ahead and label that, so y equals 2, and it was sine of x minus pi over 2. Okay. Questions on how that happened or um, how we came to like those conclusions? Everybody okay? Yeah? Sure, so the period is always 2 pi unless there is a value, a different coefficient other than 1 in front of x. So this was our equation. The coefficient was 1, therefore the period is 2 pi. Because you're really just taking 2 pi and dividing it by 1, which will still give you 2 pi. You'll notice that from pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2 is that period of 2 pi. Okay? It represents just one full curve. Everybody all right with that one? Okay, turn the page back and pick a new color. Okay, so looking at B, now we have Y equals uh, one-third sine of 2X. So we're going to definitely change the amplitude again, right? So we're going to um, shrink this now, really. Um, so our amplitude is the absolute value of a third, which is just a third. So now that means um, that the range goes from what? Usually the range goes from negative 1 to 1. Now it should go from negative 1 third to 1 third. And you know what? Let's go back and add that here. 
uh, we did not. So let's just put the range uh, back in example A was from negative 2 to 2. Okay. Um, the period, we're definitely going to have to change now. So the coefficient in front of x uh, is now 2. So we're going to take that period of 2 pi, and we're going to divide it by the value of b. So b is 2, so that means that my new period is pi. So this represents one full curve. It's now only going to take pi radians in order to make that full curve. And then the jump or the scale... I have to take the period, which is pi, and I have to divide it by 4. So now my scale is going to change. I'm going to count by pi over 4. And there are no other changes. Everybody okay with this, how I got to all of this information? Okay, so flip back. Things are going to get a little crowded here. So... I want to imagine kind of like that one-third and negative one-third mark where that would be. Um, and then I have to count by pi over 4. So this is going to be pi over 4. And then 2 pi over 4 would be a pi over 2. And then 3 pi over 4. And then 4 pi over 4 giving me that full um, period of pi. Okay, So I have to fit all my graph right here. Again, sine starts at 0, 0. There is no shifting, so it's still going to start at 0, 0. It takes on that same shape every time. It goes up to a maximum, which is going to be at pi over 4, uh, 1 third, which this is getting really crowded. Um, then it's going to touch down, right, and it, as an intercept. It's going to go down to a minimum. I'm going to label it like this. 3 pi over 4, negative 1 third. And it's going to go back up to an intercept. Still taking on that same shape, but now it's just um, shrinking both vertically and horizontally. And then labeling that function, this was y equals 1 third the sine of 2x. Questions? Okay. All right, now we're going to go back to cosine. Um, you can, whatever, we're going to graph on here now. So and I, I'm going to run out of room. We're going to have to change this. Um, I might just skip this one. We're going to skip D because I ran out of room. So we're just going to do C. Um, looking at this, we have Y equals negative 3 cosine X. So thinking about the types of changes, is the period going to change? No, because there's no coefficient in front of X other than 1. Is it going to shift up or down or left or right? No. Is it going to stretch? Is it going to have a different amplitude? Yes. yes, in a different range, right? How about this negative? We haven't seen a negative. What's that going to do? It's going to, what does a negative always do to a graph? Flips it. So there's going to be a reflection here. All right, we haven't seen that yet. So the amplitude always has to be positive, right? Because you always have to take the absolute value. So I'm still going to take the absolute value of negative 3, and I'm going to get 3 which means that this is going to change the range. So what is my new range now? Negative 3 to 3. Okay. But now the only other change that's going on here is there's a reflection. So think about that reflection. It's not locked in. So what's it going to reflect over? The x or the y? The x, because it's really with the y, and the x is really theta now, the theta axis. Okay, but it's the same idea. So this reflects. Um, over the x-axis or theta-axis, okay? And so we want to keep that in mind when we're graphing this. So wherever we had a max before, we'll now have a min and vice versa, all right? So let's go back up to this graph. Um, we have to go up to uh, 3 and negative 3. Uh, we talked about the fact that the period didn't change, so that means that the jump didn't change, right? So we're still going to be counting by pi over 2, so that's a good scale that we have here. 
um, except now the only difference is we're going to have to go up to 3 and down to negative 3, but we're also going to have to reflect these. So normally we would be here at a y-intercept of 0, 3, but there's a reflection. So now it's really going to become a minimum and be down here. All of those intercepts will stay the same, but where we had a minimum before, we now have to have a maximum. Intercept uh, stays the same, and then that maximum becomes a minimum. And you want to label all of those max and min points. And then draw in your curve. Whoopsie. I got really carried away there. I white out. I might use that a lot today. <laughs> okay, go ahead and label that graph. So y equals negative 3 um, cosine x. Okay, make yourself a note just on D if you were to graph it. Uh, let's just find the information and then you can kind of imagine what the graph would look like. Um, what's going to change here for D? Just the period, right? So this is really like y equals the cosine of 1 half x, right? So that b value is 1 half there. So the amplitude's the same, which means the range is going to stay the same. Um, but the period is going to change. So to find the period, you're going to take 2 pi and divide it by b. So when you divide by a half, it's the same thing as multiplying by 2. So this is really going to give me 4 pi. So now to make that full revolution, you have to go from 0 to 4 pi. Okay, so it's going to really stretch that out horizontally. And then the jump or the scale would be just pi. Because you're going to take 4 pi divided by 4. So you would count by pi. That's why I ran out of room because we've got to go to 4 pi. Okay. Questions? Okay, so we haven't looked at a lot of shifting. We had um, one shift there, but we're just going to describe some of these transformations that are going on here. Um, so when you talk about a translation, what is that talking about? Just left or right, up or down. That's all this is talking about. That's all we have to describe. So look at A. Uh, just so you know, it's kind of hard to read. This is a plus sign here. Okay, so remember, you want to decide, is it locked in, is it not locked in? So is that plus 3 locked in? No, so therefore this moves up 3 units. Okay, how about B? It's moving down, right, because it's not locked in, so down 5. Um, C? Good, right pi. And now careful on D. What's the problem with D? That 2. So before we can even deal with that, it's like it's already been distributed to the pi over 4. So what do we have to do with the 2? You have to factor it out. So this is going to become x plus y. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by a half. So this is going to give us pi over 8, right? So this is really moving left, pi over 8 units. I must have taken those off. Okay. Okay.